But square cut or pear shape, these rocks don't lose their shape. Diamonds are a girl's best friend. Yeah, that's right. Diamonds are truly a girl's best friend. So welcome to my jewelry podcast, a place where we talk about art because every piece of art has a story and jewelry is no exception. So if you're a jewelry lover, just keep on listening. And if you're not, well, you can also stay because I'm sure you'll change. As it is my first episode, I feel the need to introduce myself to you guys. So here it goes. My name is Camilla. I'm a 19-year-old teen that has just started her own business not a long time ago. Um, wait, why am I talking about myself in the third person? Okay, let's start again. So, as I was saying, I just started my online business recently and the concept is like, you send me your old, borrowed, whatever jewelry you have and I upcycle it. I also make new pieces with materials and gems coming from Africa. And my team is mostly composed of African women, which is also part of the sustainable program of my brand. Now that you already know a little bit about me and what I do, let's talk about antique engagement rings. What is there not to love about them? Well, most antique engagement rings come from the 1920s, 1930s, like around the Art Deco era. And I just love love. I love being able to be part of other people's love stories. So whenever they bring me antique engagement rings that they want me to upcycle, I get really, really, really excited to work with those pieces because they're just so classical and timeless. And the younger people right now that are getting engaged, they just love that one of a kind, really unique aspect to anything in their lives, especially engagement rings and art deco rings. Well, antique jewelry rings in general just have that. They're one of a kind, They truly have a history and story behind them and can add something unique to the beginning of their own love story. The most popular ones are, of course, diamond rings because they are classic and also the most durable. So that's what keeps them in the forefront for when choosing an engagement ring. But with our deco pieces, you'll often see sapphires or emeralds or rubies as little accents to them, which is always popular, specifically sapphires, which is our most popular gemstone. But my customers tend to also bring me pieces from other eras, like the Edwardian era from the early 1900s until the 19 teens, where pieces are way more feminine and sophisticated with a lot of floral motifs, so not quite as bold as you will see in the Art Deco era. There are also other periods that are attractive to the brides at the moment, such as the Retro era, the Georgian era, and also the Victorian one, and so on. But to be honest, the Victorian era is actually one of my favorites, because um, they're just so simple but they're harder to come by especially when it comes to engagement rings because engagement rings weren't like something that people had back in that time which is also a lot of yellow gold that is also coming back to vogue now but it's not as popular as white gold or platinum so the pieces that come from that era are definitely more simple with some engraving details But of course, the ones that I get the most are from the Art Deco era because they're just easier to find. Well, I hope that you enjoyed this first episode and there will definitely be a part two about like engagement rings and their like specific antique um, details like There will definitely be a part two because I feel like there are more stuff to be explained about the eras and their style and the um, just like their details and everything that comes with them. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed it and don't forget to come back on Monday for my next episode where I will talk about the part two of antique engagement rings and on the third episode 
just to give you a hint about it, you can um, expect me to answer the question. Like, is there such thing as jewelry wardrobe essentials? So stay tuned and see you guys next time. Monday, of course. So see you.